It's a struggle, really. You're constantly fighting with it to try and get the shot. But when you do get the shot, you get it. Do you know that saying where it goes something like, if you love something, then let it go, and if it comes back, it's yours? Well... So yeah, I tried to send the Hasselblad back, but then DHL was having all sorts of problems and they just straight up ghosted me and stopped responding to my emails and my phone calls. Um, and then it just showed back up on my doorstep. So I'm sorry, Hasselblad, but I think that it wants to be with me instead of you. <sighs> Jokes aside, I am going to try and figure out how to get this back to Hasselblad, but I just thought it was funny how it uh, showed back up um, the day before I was going to start recording this video. So yeah, it's back. Um, I might try and use it for a shoot or two this week, depending on how fast we can uh, figure out what's going on with DHL. So Hasselblad, I hope you're not mad. <laughs> All right, yes. So if you're not caught up or you don't follow me on Instagram for some reason, um, I did have the opportunity to work with Hasselblad for the last month or so and use their X2D100C as my one and only photography camera. I guess a disclaimer is kind of in order. Um, this video isn't sponsored by Hasselblad whatsoever. Um, I did do work for Hasselblad over on Instagram, but this video and most of what I will be talking about in this video as far as like the shoots and the images that I took. Those are all for me because I wanted to. Um, so yeah, Hasselblad is not sponsoring this video. These are my thoughts and you know my experiences using this camera for the last month. All right, so this video isn't going to be super technical. I'm not going to get into like the nitty gritty kind of specs of the camera and medium format versus full frame. I'm just going to kind of talk about what I noticed and my experience actually using the camera because to be honest, this might be a little bit of a hot take, but I don't really think camera specs matter. I think we get really caught up in them online but then in practice when you're actually using gear it doesn't really matter um, which we'll actually touch on that a little bit at the end of the video but um, I think I can kind of break down my experience using this camera into kind of two categories so there is my experience when I'm actually shooting with the camera and then my experience in post editing the images that I capture. So starting things off with the experience of using this camera while shooting, it's uh, it's different um, than full frame uh, for a lot of reasons that we'll try and get into in as timely of a manner as possible. I'm trying not to rant through this whole video about this camera, but um, the shooting experience, if you're coming from something like any modern full frame camera from Sony or Nikon or Canon, it's a definitely a different and much slower paced um, experience. Uh, my friend Mitch Lolly, who also had the opportunity to use this camera for a while, he kind of put it best where this camera is meant for making art. So you're not gonna be shooting really any kind of campaigns or anything like that with this camera. This camera is meant for making art and specifically for making photographs. This camera has no video functionality whatsoever. It is strictly a photography camera. And as a photography camera, it is very slow. Um, like I said, if you're coming from any modern full frame camera, it's gonna be a different experience. So I am a Sony shooter. You know, I shoot with Sony full frame cameras. And I think over the years, I've gotten in the habit of of kind of just burst firing. So for every like one composition, I'll take like 30 photos. Um, which you just can't do on a Hasselblad. It's a lot slower experience. But yeah, it really makes you slow down and focus on each and every frame and being more intentional with the photos you are taking. And at first, I didn't quite enjoy this. I found it kind of frustrating, but over time, I really started to enjoy that slower pace. Now going back to Sony is kind of that slower mindset is something I'm implementing into my style of shooting uh, going back over to Sony. <laughs> All right, so funny enough, that's probably about as nice as I can be about the shooting experience because pretty much everything else about it is its work and it's very tedious. So a few kind of things I noticed over time is the viewfinder is extremely slow. So the time it takes for the camera to register that you have moved your eye up to the viewfinder is long. It You're sitting there waiting kind of for the viewfinder to, to wake up and realize that you're looking through it to the point where I just gave up trying to use the viewfinder entirely. Um, luckily, the 
rear screen is gorgeous. Um, it's super bright, very high resolution, very responsive. Um, it's probably the biggest uh, screen I've ever used on a camera. And so, yes, the viewfinder is really slow and it was kind of annoying, but I eventually just started using the screen for everything and that ended up working out fine. But it is something to note. Um, also, there is a little like top screen, which is actually on a lot of modern cameras these days. I used to think they were so cool. I've never had a camera that had a top screen like this, but I never used it. And I think it's honestly a complete waste. It just shows you information that you can find on the screen itself. So I never really found myself in a position that I ever really used uh, that top screen. Something else that isn't super great on this camera is the autofocus. So this camera, as of recording this video, just got updated with face detect autofocus and it's very rudimentary. There's no eye detect, there's no real tracking um, and the autofocus is very slow. And while you're shooting, you will be waiting for the camera to focus and it will miss focus constantly. If you have any kind of backlit for your subject, uh, the focus is going to struggle. Um, there were a few occasions where I did swap over to manual focus just to grab focus on my subject. But yeah, the focus is really slow. You're going to be waiting for it quite a bit. And because the face detect autofocus was so slow, I ended up relying a lot on just a focus point. But this camera doesn't have a joystick. So to, in order to move around that focus point, you have to use the touch screen, which can be kind of cumbersome to constantly be taking your hand off off the camera to focus with the focus point. I get they're going for like a minimalistic look with this camera, but just add the joystick. It would just be so much easier to move that focus point around uh, with the joystick. The camera does have a one terabyte internal NVMe SSD, which is honestly kind of insane. And I really hope that going into 2024, more cameras implement uh, internal storage. Um, this camera doesn't have an SD card slot. It's like a CF Express type B card slot. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, but like I said, with one terabyte of internal storage, the entire time I used it, I never used an SD card or felt the need like I needed one. I just would plug the camera directly into the computer when it was time to dump footage and it worked great. The ISO performance on this camera is also great. Um, I shot the majority of my images uh, with this camera at like ISO 800, which on a full frame camera is kind of where noise would start to kind of be introduced into the image. But at ISO 800, the image was completely clear on this camera. I think that's a lot to do with the fact that this is a larger sensor, you know, being a medium format camera and just having a higher dynamic range and a larger bit depth, you're just able to, to push the sensor a lot farther and keep a cleaner image for longer. You know, having that ISO 800, you know, be so clean, I was able to shoot in a lot more low light environments than I usually am able to with my uh, Sony cameras. But yeah, so those are kind of my thoughts about the kind of shooting experience. And there might seem like there's a lot going against this camera as far as like using it to shoot, you know, having, you know, bad autofocus and being very slow and you know things like that other things that I mentioned and I think when I first started using it I did really kind of feel that like it does feel like work to to shoot with this camera you know and you really do feel like you are fighting with it throughout the entire shoot but like weirdly as I used it more and like completely understanding all of those negatives and why most people wouldn't you know, like that, I honestly just like really grew to enjoy the shooting experience with this camera. Like on paper, I should enjoy the Sony cameras more, you know, faster autofocus, faster shutters, things like that. Like the experience is better on modern full frame cameras, but I don't know, there's just something so rewarding about having to shoot slower and slow down and be more intentional with your compositions and having to like really fight to get the images you want. Because then, like I said in the intro, when you get the image, they are beautiful and you really feel like that sense of accomplishment because you really had to work to get that image. And it's just way more fun that way than just like snapping off 2,500 photos in a half hour. So yeah, like I said, the shooting experience is not great, but if you're someone like me and you really just enjoy the craft and making art, then I think you'll, you'll enjoy the shooting experience on these medium format cameras on the Hasselblad um, more than full frame. I know I definitely, again, it was a struggle at first, but by the end I was, uh, 
really, really enjoying it. And I honestly miss it going back to uh, to Sony now. All right, I think we'll quickly jump in and talk about the lens I got to use. So this is a 90 millimeter f2.5 prime lens. So if you wanted to convert this lens into a full frame lens, so something that would go on like a Canon or a Sony camera, it would actually be a 71 millimeter f2 lens. And this lens was great. Um, I actually really grew to enjoy it. And I think it's for one specific reason. So something cool about medium format lenses and having that larger sensor is the way depth and compression works. So with this 90 millimeter lens, you're getting the field of view of a 70 millimeter lens, but you are retaining the compression of a 90 millimeter lens, resulting in very beautiful images. You know, the f 2.5 aperture also, you know, gives off some incredible bokeh. Um, like I said, I'm not going to get really technical with it, but as someone who primarily uses a 50 millimeter focal length and does not like an 85 millimeter lens, I think that this 70 millimeter equivalent focal length is kind of like the sweet spot. Um, and I really did enjoy the look that it gave images and the way it rendered them. It's really great. It's one of the most popular lenses. I think it's already sold out again on their website. Um, and it's it's a great lens. Okay, moving on to my experience editing the photos I got out of this camera. Um, and it's kind of a spoiler alert. The images out of this camera are absolutely beautiful. And I don't know how to describe it, but there is just something else about these images and the way medium format renders images that is just so pleasing to my eye and I think it fits my aesthetic and my style of shooting uh, much better than full frame does. A lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, Hasselblad's famous color science is present obviously in this camera and it just means the images are just beautiful right out of the camera. Like to be honest, a lot of the images I took, I didn't really feel like I needed to do a lot of tweaking. You know, if you wanna just post JPEGs right out of this camera, you definitely could. Um, I began to edit the photos more and more to kind of just fit my aesthetic and kind of the, the vision I had for the shoot. But having that base layer of these incredible colors for the Haspa just meant that I was able to get the look I wanted to get a lot faster than when I'm shooting on my, my Sony cameras. My dog's whining at the door. Um, I lost my train of thought now. Um, go, get the, go get the dog. Oh, okay, she is now settled back on the bed, not whining at the door. Um, I don't really remember what we were talking about. Um, oh yeah, the images out of this camera are great and they are worth all of the hard work it takes to get them when you're actually uh, shooting. But yeah, that'll pretty much do it for my thoughts after using the Hasselblad x 100 c for the last month. Um, yeah, like I said, we're not gonna get super technical with it. These are kind of just the things that I noticed after being able to use it for a short while for all of my photos. But yeah, I think long term my goal will be to switch over to Hasselblad as my main photography camera. I think uh, that medium format, it just fits my style and the, the type of images that I like to make um, best, more so than full frame. Despite all of its flaws and the fact that it's not the latest and greatest on the market, I just, I love the experience of shooting with it and I love um, the images I can get out of that camera. I don't have the means to switch to it right now. Like I said, it's a very expensive camera, but um, hopefully down the line, I'll be able to uh, switch over to the Hasselblad into medium format photography. With that being said though, I do think it's important that this camera might be something that works for me and something that I want to do personally, but by no means take that as like, you need this camera to take images how I take images. Um, honestly, camera and camera gear doesn't matter. So for example, I'm gonna show you three images here and can you tell me which one of these was taken with the Hasselblad? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you probably couldn't guess which one of these was the Hasselblad. It was this one, if you're wondering, and then these other two were taken on the Sony a7R5 and the Sony a7C2. And to kind of put that into perspective, you know, that's a $2,000 camera, a $4,000 camera, and like an $8,000 dollar camera and it's really hard to tell the difference between them and the reason i'm showing you this and kind of mentioning this here at the end is because i think it's easy to get caught up in these gear videos talking about expensive gear and starting to think that you need that gear in order to 
create beautiful images. And that simply just isn't the case. While gear is important and nice gear does serve a purpose, um, your talent and your craft and your mastery of it is really what's most important. You know, you should master things like composition and color and editing long before feeling like you need to get the most expensive camera. You know, for me, I'm able to get my job done and create beautiful images on a $2,000 camera, $4,000 camera, or an $8,000 camera. You know, the gear does matter, but it doesn't matter as much as honing your skills. You should focus on that first before feeling like you need to buy more gear. But yeah, little tangent here at the end, but that'll do it for me in this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.